Hey guys, Dr. Sean here with The Active Life. Gonna give you a brute tip of the day, talking about tendinitis and tendinosis, what the difference is and what they mean to you. Um, common flaw that we see in the medical diagnostic field this day is that things get garbage pail diagnosed. And what I mean by that is you go to the doctor's office with elbow pain, right? I have pain over here, doc. I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, if you guys can't see, it's right here, right? Or maybe it's on the backside over here, wherever it is. And you walk out of the doctor's office with the diagnosis of tendinitis and, and they tell you to rest. And, and sometimes that's great. And sometimes that's exactly the opposite of what you need. So I want to start talking to you guys a little bit about what the differences are so you can understand and start making some decisions for yourself. Please understand that anything I'm telling you today is not necessarily a medical prescription. I don't know you. I haven't evaluated your structures. You need to start making some decisions for yourself. But this is a way for you to start thinking before you even go into the doctor. So tendonitis is by definition an inflammatory process. What we have here is the tendon drawn. These lines represent the tendon and these dots represent blood, other material that's in the area where the tendon lives. That's the inflammation. Itis means inflammation. When you exercise, blood flow to a tendon increases. When the blood flow to this tendon increases, that dot saturation goes from a little bit painful right now to a whole lot more saturated and painful. And what happens when it becomes more saturated is we ask the tendon to kind of spread and the space around it gets compressive and that hurts. That's what tendonitis is. The first rep is the best, the last rep is the worst. It keeps getting worse rep to rep to rep until you feel like I just probably shouldn't be doing this. That's tendonitis. Best remedy for tendonitis, unfortunately, is going to be rest. Sometimes bracing distal to the area, so if my elbow hurts over here, and I throw a brace on that supports my arm over here and makes the tendon pull from this spot, that can be beneficial. You can go to any surgical supply store and get a uh, tennis elbow brace. That'll help a little bit, but again, the best remedy for tendonitis is going to be rest and a really good diet. Um, tendinosis is the exact opposite of tendonitis. It responds exactly the opposite to the way tendonitis does. So you're in the gym and now it's okay. My first rep felt like crap, but as the workout goes on, I start to feel better. You know, it actually hurts in the beginning, but as I go, it starts to feel better. You're more likely suffering from tendinosis than tendonitis. And osis is a degenerative process. What that means is that basically, if you're looking at the tendon, this is what an ideal tendon looks like. Nice and linear, all the fibers line up with each other and they all head to the same spot and they all travel in the same direction. Remember, your tendons won't stretch. They don't get very good blood supply. Uh, and they don't have very, very much elastin component, which means that there's not much stretching to it. Tendinosis is when we have a haphazard layering of the fibers of the tendon. That's not going to improve with rest. This is just gonna stay right there. That's why people who have tendinitis have it for years, even though they've rested, right? We have to start looking at what is actually causing the problem. So what I wanna do is talk to you guys about some exercises that you can do if you're suffering from a tendinosis issue. Because again, we're not gonna be able to foam roll lacrosse ball or smash the tendon and get it any better. We need to have that tendon regenerate and start relayering itself. So how we're gonna do that is like this. First thing I want you to do is grab a dumbbell. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna set up on a box, you're gonna set up on a bench, whatever it is that you wanna use at the end of a table, it doesn't matter to me. We're gonna start off with our wrist in a curled position. So you're gonna go ahead and grab that weight, pretending this is a weight, right? We're gonna pull it all the way up, and then we're gonna go ahead and lower it all the way down and extend our fingers all the way. So again, you're gonna pull it all the way up, and you're gonna go ahead and extend all the way with your fingers extended. You notice that I did the first round with my elbow bent. The next round we're going to do, we're gonna go ahead and straighten our elbow out. By straightening our elbow out, we start to affect the muscles that cross the elbow. I don't expect you to start to figure out whether the muscles that are damaged, the tendons that are damaged, are short of the elbow or long of the elbow. Don't worry about it, we're gonna hit both. So by doing the same thing, we're just gonna go ahead and extend our elbow and repeat the same process, flexing the hand with the opposite arm, and then extending the hand and the fingers down all the way to the end with the elbow extended. These are what we call eccentric wrist flexion exercises, and they're gonna go a long way into helping your tendonitis. Oh, excuse me, not your tendonitis, your tendinosis. So um, I hope this was helpful for you guys in deciphering what you need to do differently for tendonitis and tendinosis. Um, until next time, let's get moving.